Eagles to the Hooskow. On this occasion, Roger confronted an individual he knew to be wanted in a neighboring county. Roger confronted him, and the subject immediately and unexpectedly suddenly slugged Roger and ran. Roger pursued him, but Roger was wearing heavy shoes, bulletproof vest. He was about 50 pounds heavier than the young man who had turned and ran. And he was, the young man, the scoundrel, uh, was wearing lightweight shoes and lightweight clothes and was a much faster runner than Roger. As he pursued the scoundrel across a grassy field, Roger shouted, stop, stop. The scoundrel did not and kept gaining on Roger, leading Roger to shout, stop or I will shoot. Morley Swingle explains that Roger was very well aware that the Supreme Court had ruled in 1985 that a police officer could not lawfully shoot a fleeing suspect unless he had reasonable grounds to believe that the suspect was a danger to public safety. But Roger must have thought the suspect might not be up on constitutional law. <laughs> and thus he shouted a second time, stop or I'll shoot. I mean it. And that the subject was uh, reported to begin weaving as he ran. <laughs> but he picked up speed. Roger stayed on course and was running out of steam. And then frustrated, he mustered a last burst of energy, all of the rest of his oxygen, and, shoutly, and, and shouted as loudly as he could, bang! <laughs> and the scoundrel, running at full speed, hit the ground and rolled. <laughs> Roger caught up with him, ran to him, jumped on him, handcuffed him. The man was moaning and groaning, and Roger asked him, where are you hit? <laughs> Roger told me that. The man responded, I don't know, I heard all over. <laughs> and pleaded to be taken to a hospital. Roger, Roger said his comment was, it was probably those high caliber bullets I was shooting. <laughs> At least that's how Roger told me the story. That's classic, that's classic. And that's Roger Fields, classic individual, a great storyteller. And so we dedicated, we dedicate the highway to carry the name, in perpetuity perhaps, for the name of Roger Fields, and to keep alive his so vivid memory for what he gave to us 26 years of his life, 26 years of selfless dedication, hard work, long hours, personal sacrifice, and a great risk. Think of all the programs he was involved in or started, the SALT program, perhaps his favorite, the SEMO drug task forces, major case squads, the United Way, calling bingo. He called bingo at the Senior Citizen Center. He got me involved one day by saying, why don't you come along with me? It's gonna be fun. It's a good thing to do. So I went and on several occasions, called bingo at the Senior Citizen Place. Little League football. Safe House for Women, the Southeast Missouri Law Enforcement Memorial, the Community Caring Council, Infectious Disease Task Force, the Juvenile Detention and Justice System. He excelled, and this is significant, in working with both young and old. A great testimony to his interest and to his diversity. He worked well with everyone and everyone liked and respected him. He's the perfect symbol of what a community needs so much of and what it desires and seldom gets. Roger Fields is that symbol that we hold dear, professional, dedicated, compassionate, and always present. He's that officer we hold before the region, the state, and the nation. To all who drive, all those who drive along, will drive along the Roger Fields Highway, we can say, here, here is one of our best. 
Here on this highway, we hold to the light an officer who inspired us, who taught us, and who protected us. His contributions help us identify who we are as a people and in the broadest sense, as a nation. He was dedicated to us. And so now, we dedicate to him a highway that reflects our appreciation and our pride. Thank you, Roger Fields. 